right, ladies and gentlemen, we got an evening stream tonight with guest Mr. Jordan Mack uh, over at Nervos Network. I think, what is your official title? Developer, software engineer, senior software engineer? Yeah, senior software engineer here at the Nervos Foundation. Nice. And we're here to talk about all things CKB and the new RGB++ stuff. You know, all that stuff, even for me, gets to be quite over my head. And... Um, it's a lot of technical jargon. So we're our goal today is to kind of break that down to the layman's terms. You know, is it fundamentally something that's going to work pretty well? Is it worth investing in things of that nature? And uh, we're kind of just going to hop into it. Um, well, welcome. It's not it's not been very long since we last talked. I think we hung out on Friday a little bit. And uh, we've been doing some streams here and there. We're kind of due for another group one. It's been yeah, a way overdue, actually. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you guys know me. I don't take myself too seriously when we do these lives. So uh, we're just going to go with the ebbs and flows of this here. Uh, but we are talking Nervos. So over, Jordan, in the back in there, if you look at the middle column, it'll say layers, music, and then comments. You can actually see comments live. Uh, so you don't have to wait for them to laid on the uh, actual live stream if you don't want to. Oh, I see. Okay. Perfect. So we are going out to actually Twitter is live. You'll see comments from there. Uh, Twitch and the, the YouTube. What's up, Beth? What's up, Dale? And uh, what are you thinking, man? RGB? You liking what you see? Uh, I'm I'm really liking what I see. Like this yeah. is one of those technologies that it kind of came out of left field for a lot of us, right? I had I didn't really know too much about Bitcoin's RGB at all um, when all of a sudden um, CKB's RGB plus plus was announced. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to do a bunch of catch up on it, and it is a very deep topic. Technically, it's a very, very complicated protocol, um, but the results are, are very positive, I think, for the ecosystem, not just for CKB, but for Bitcoin as well. Gotcha. So as far as like what is there's two different things here, right? So there's RGB, the plus plus protocol, and then there's BTC or BTCKB, right? Yeah, that's right. So what BTCKB is, is, is that's really the the overarching umbrella term for the initiative, which is to more tightly integrate Bitcoin and CKB, um, basically using CKB as a layer two for the most part. And when I say layer two, in this industry, layer two has a lot of different meanings and they're not all agreed upon. There's a lot of different things that you can call um, a, a layer two, like for example, Polygon, which is one of the most popular L2s in the Ethereum um, ecosystem is isn't really an L2 at all. It's a side chain or possibly just an L1, if you want to call it. Nervos CKB is basically the same thing. It, it was intended to be a layer one, but it has such rich interoperability features to it that it can effectively function as a layer two. And just as you would have it, it, the best layer two happens to be a layer one. Gotcha. So I've, I've actually, um, you got to give the Google Translate some leeway here, but the first paper that Cypher put out about this, um, they were comparing this to be the uh, Matic of China. So not a far cry for analogy there. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's pretty accurate. I mean, and a big part of the reason I say that's accurate is because the initiative came out of the, the East for sure. There was a lot more excitement about it um, mm -hmm. than in the West was initially. Like we're still catching up on this a little bit. Um, if you look at what Bitcoin's been doing for the last couple months, a little, the last couple of years, actually, it went from being uh, an ecosystem of strict maximalists who didn't really want to do anything with their chain, right? It was just it was mm -hmm. supposed to be a store of value and nothing more. And now you have much, much more of the, the ecosystem participants basically saying, we want to do something with our chain. Um, you know, smart contracts, which came out on Ethereum in 2014, I believe, two, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, or at least maybe this one is announced. I can't remember if it was actually released then. I don't think it was actually released until 2015. But regardless, it, they've been out. They've been tested. It's clear that there is value there, a lot of value. Um, and so the, a lot of the people have started to wake up a little bit on that. And that's why we such uh, we saw such a, a, a welcomed adoption of ordinals, which started off strong and it didn't fade. It's just continued to grow. Um, it so, is definitely growing. Yeah. So there's a lot of interest. There's a lot, there's a lot of room for expansion. Uh, and there's a, there's several L2s in the space, and uh, CKB is really well positioned to be the best one out there. Gotcha. So let's take a look here at the next little spot. Uh, I keep flipping around here. So 
um we talked about a little bit of what it is like those side chains but um so the easiest way to ask this would be a lot of people like this guy i pull up just a tweet from him so in today's episode of what random bs is clogging up bitcoin looks like a lot of ckb or looks like looks like a lot of rgb extensions called ckb which is an op return to transaction full commitments to change uh, how would that work differently than like actually ordinals is this going to clog up the chain like ordinals does is even the clogging up the chain a real thing yeah well this is this is kind of a controversial topic and it has been for the longest time like i came into the bitcoin space in 2011 and they were still arguing about this back then there's a, a certain segment of the developers and of the, the the general ecosystem that believe that Bitcoin should be used for transactions and store of value, money transfers only, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the rest of them who are, you could probably say, are a little bit more realistic, which say you can't really guarantee the intent of something in a permissionless blockchain. Um, and so Ordinals falls into that category. It's they It was not an intended usage necessarily, but people are paying for it. They're paying for that transaction fee. So um, my take on it is, is like, if you pay the fee for inclusion, um, that is a perfectly valid use case. You, you you're just included. be spamming. Yeah, yeah, you're included. <laughs> you paid for inclusion. You, you paid for what you're utilizing. Mm -hmm. And there's no problem with that. You could just be spamming the chain endlessly. I mean, if you're paying for it, the, ch the chain is benefiting from that. Yeah, miners aren't really going to care either way. It's just no, the matches that seem to have an issue with it. Exactly. It's kind of wild the end of the day so uh how do you actually think this enhances like the bitcoin experience i mean it, uh, as far as I, my understanding is the old rgb protocol was just an nft thing right it couldn't actually do smart contracts um well rgb is a it's a complicated protocol and it's not done yet is, is the thing it's not very little of it is actually finished i actually as part of the research that i was doing just to learn about all this stuff. I went out and I downloaded some of the RGB wallets and I tried to follow their guides and I really, I couldn't even get it to work. Gotcha. Um, you know, if, if I had just sat there and and pounded my head against this thing for a couple hours, I'm probably, I probably could have, but I was, I was more just trying to look at what is the user, the average user experience of this. And from what I got with, from that in, in the five to 10 minutes I started looking at it was that it was basically unusable. Um, it's, it's still pretty early. This doesn't mean that there's no potential behind it. I think there's a tremendous amount of potential, but it, it takes a long time to de develop these things. And these people that are, are putting together RGB are, are clearly very, very talented. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to take them a while to, to move forward on a lot of things. And part of that is the full feature set. When we talk about things like um, the their smart contracts, they have a virtual machine that they're working on. It is not complete at this point. Uh, it's going to be a long time before it's, it's truly production ready. And in that time period, while they're still working on this stuff, um, I mean, there's solutions that CK can be can provide to it that go do the exact same thing. I would say actually do some more than the RGB protocol was actually designed to do in terms of usability, especially. Mm -hmm. And we can do that much, much quicker because a lot of the technology that's out there, like for example, CKB VM has been ready for years. It's, it is production ready. Yeah. So, I mean, we can take advantage of all of these different things and, and really capitalize on helping the BTC market realize a lot of the potential that they've kind of opened the door with at least a crack with RGB. Gotcha. That's awesome, man. RG. I was trying to find the roadmap here because there was a roadmap. Uh, let's see here. What is the official Twitter page of RGB? Or is there not one? Is it just Cypher Cell Studio? Are you, well, wait, are you talking about RGB or RGB++? Plus plus? I know the, No, the, RGB gets there. I mean, I know the fact we were just talking about RGB, but I was trying to mm -hmm. update where we were on the roadmap of this new version of it. So the old technology, I don't, I mean, the RGB stuff, I don't think that's, I think that's dead in the water at this point, isn't it? No, no, no. Okay, so let me let me back up a second and, and, and say there's Bitcoin RGB and there's yep. CKB's RGB++. Plus plus. Perfect. Now, it kind of, it kind of sound it sounds the same and you would think rgb plus plus is this an, a superset or is it a, a the new version they're sta they stand together and and apart at the same time gotcha. um rgb plus plus is is nervos's answer to this which will now enables the connectivity with rgb but are the rgb protocol is like i said that's still that's being developed. back in 2015 yeah it's yeah. it's it's still going right they're still working on this thing mm -hmm. and they're making progress it's just very very slow 
Gotcha. Um, so th it is not deprecated or replaced by any means. In fact, actually, there was a, a bit of a controversy out there when RGB++ was first released. They really didn't like that name. The, the RGB team didn't like the name RGB++. And I think there's a bit of a, a culture clash there. Yeah. Whereas that that type of thing is much more expected in the East to share names. It's, it's it's even a way of honoring in certain ways. Whereas they saw it as as like trademark theft. There, there is no yeah. trademark, by the way, but they they didn't like it. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean the whole sharing of names out there is first names or family names, right? It just keeps going. Pretty much. Yep. Yeah. That's cool, man. So what um have you tried the new Joy ID side of the RGB plus plus stuff? I've been looking around at it. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's being built. I mean, Joy ID is a really a key component in this whole mix um, because this is going to enable um, it's 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 enabling so many users to to have such a, a positive experience. And mm -hmm. now that they fully support Bitcoin too, they've just really just opened the door for them too um, in terms of having an experience that's very positive on the user experience side, but also um, links directly into RGB plus plus. So yeah. this is going to, it's going to be pretty seamless. Like everything that you see on other chains like Ethereum and Nervos, you'll be able to see those same exact experiences in uh, Bitcoin now through RGB++. It's going to be the same exact interface. There's yeah. not going to be any any difference to it. Yeah. Hey, 41 of you guys in the chat out there, say hi if you are sitting here listening. If you got any questions, certainly let me know. And uh, while I'm thinking that, let me just give him a shout out for his Twitter here. Uh, he is at underscore, or excuse me, at Jordan underscore Mac here. You can't miss the, uh, I don't know if you got a little name for this chicken nugget guy, but uh, it's that's just his the logo chicken there. nugget guy. Yeah, it's, it's, this is just <laughs> one of those. I, I, I used it a long time ago. It's stuck. For whatever reason, people really, really remember that. They remember that icon more than they remember me. So I just keep <laughs> using it. At this point, I can't get rid of it. And then uh, they do have an upcoming episode here that Nervos does uh, from the Nervos Foundation called Hashing It Out. They do that quite often. Um, I don't know what the schedule is. Um, I did jump on the last one with Matt, but I think it's you and Matt this time. Uh, yeah, discuss yeah, well, the latest yeah, ecosystem two... updates on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday we're coming up with that one. Yeah, we have not been doing it super frequently. Um, and Matt was traveling internationally, so we had to delay it for a couple of weeks this time. But yeah, we have a whole bunch of ecosystem updates that we're going to go be going through this Thursday. Uh, and that includes a bunch of the stuff that we're, we're going over today talking, with RGB yeah. too. Yeah, you'll get to hear Matt's take on it as well. Gotcha. Yeah, I think the last stream was the, I don't know if it was called the $1 billion market cap stream or it was something else. That was when we hit a billion. On, I, can't, uh, I can't remember what which one it was, honestly. <laughs> uh, let's uh, go forward here a little bit. We do have an antenna right here. So if you just see me glancing over at a piece of paper, um, well, I'm just making sure we cover these things. Um, to the T for you. So uh, we talked a little bit about how it actually enhances the network. Um, well, what other benefits are you thinking? Is there any kind of seamless transactions versus the other types of L2 onboarding here onto the Bitcoin ecosystem that uh, this yeah. makes it a little bit easier on the CKB side? Um, yeah, by use, utilizing CKB, you, t you really take a lot advantage of a lot of things that, that Bitcoin... Um, they've made different trade-offs in their technology. They made it so they're highly secure, but as everybody knows, the block time is pretty slow every 10 minutes. Yep. And there's other things in there too, like there's the lack of smart contracts, which are coming in RGB, but they're not there yet really. Um, transaction costs, for, especially for small transactions, is, is relatively high. And interoperability is pretty difficult. So, I mean, a lot of these things, faster block times, turning uh, complete smart contracts, using CKB VM, which is the, one of the best VMs in the industry, the one of the most flexible ones out there. You get lower transaction costs, better interoperability, like all these things. Uh, when you use RGB++, it, it's really just kind of bridging these two together in a very seamless way. Mm -hmm. um, so they get all of the advantages of CKB immediately. Gotcha. And uh, I have pulled my list here. I think I might have moved it. I think I actually closed it. That's not good. We'll hop back over here real quick. And then um, let's let's talk about RGB++ a little bit. You know, the I went through a last video. I don't know if you watched that or not. I kind of compared it. Um, there was an analogy online that I read on Twitter about, you know, the way Bitcoin sprints around and it's just pretend it's jogging through a park. Uh, not a lot of people can, they can keep pace with it, but they can't really lockstep with it. And CKB is really able to do that. 
uh, in a way that's fundamentally unique to every other solution that's currently on the market. So tell me a little bit about what uh, RGB++ is and uh, how it scales into CKB. Yeah, so RGB is, it's, it's RGB, the Bitcoin's RGB is really designed to be an off-chain scaling system. And so what it's doing is it's taking a lot of the activity and verification that used to be done on-chain and also the data storage, and they're, they're actually taking all of this off-chain and um, having it being uh, custodied by the users themselves. Now, there's a lot of there's a lot of benefits to this. I mean, for scalability, it's pretty huge because the chain has to do just a lot less stuff. Um, and it also there's huge privacy benefits because all of that information that was on chain is now taken off chain. So there's really not even a record of what was going on. Um, but there's also it's it's a trade off. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of things that happen with that. Um, mm -hmm. they're, they're still they're still subject to a 10 minute block time waiting time in most cases and also the fees of Bitcoin. Um, and also the, uh, the transfers become interactive as in both parties have to be online at the time. And there's also, a, unfortunately, if you lose your data, like you're responsible for your own data in addition to your private keys. And if you lose your data, you lose probably all your assets as well. So there's a lot more to actually maintain. Um, and like, what's the big difference is like with a private key, you, you know, you can put that on a piece of paper and hide it somewhere, right? There's all kinds of yep. solutions to that. Um, when you're custodying your own data, there's, there's nothing equivalent to that. Um, it's a big chunk of data. Um, you have to make sure that it's safe. You have to make sure that it's redundantly backed up. And if you lose this data, you lose everything. Um, so it's like, these are, these are technologies that are kind of evolving still. And, um, with RGB, this is. This is a very unique approach because, like I said, um, RG, RGB is supposed to be an offline technology, but RGB++ is actually designed where the CKB blockchain, uh, blockchain effectively functions as a client, an offline client to Bitcoin's RGB. Um, so whereas the user would have to custody their own data before, now the, the CKB blockchain is now tracking that for them. And it's, it's doing a lot of things also in the background as well. Little, little things of, like we mentioned, all of the benefits mm -hmm. uh, about how when you move something over to effectively move it to the CKB chain, um, you get all the benefits of the smart contracts and everything. But the, the really unique thing here is that when you look at most of the L2s in the ecosystem uh, or in any ecosystem for that matter, they, they're consisted of bridges, which are traditional asset bridges um, which provides central points of failure, among other uh, other drawbacks. Yeah, um, that's where all the hacks occur. Exactly. The wormhole hack was a huge one. And around the time of the world wormhole hack is when actually the core team decided that uh, we needed to rethink this a little bit because we didn't want to follow the exact same steps as everybody else and potentially lead to more hacks through a, cent a, a central point of failure, which is a bridge. So uh, RGB++ is a solution to that, actually. It's a, it, is, it uses something called uh, isomorphic binding, which is effectively taking a Bitcoin UTXO and a CKB cell, which is an extended UTXO itself, and linking them one-to-one -one in a cross-chain matter. And by doing this, there is no central point of failure because it's like everybody's assets are typically held in, in one UT, UTXO completely separate for each other. Um, so if, if the, a hack was to occur um, on a, a user specifically, let's say they lost their keys or something, and somebody got into it, it's not the same as losing the keys to a verifier node on a bridge, for example. Like It's not going to lead to a catastrophic failure. Fortunately, gotcha. one person loses their assets, but everybody else is going to be safe because it's all separated. And so there's a huge amount of advantage in that. And then when you just look at it just from a fundamental like high point of view, it is very much inherently different. It, it's really hard to say if this is really a, 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 a is it really a bridge? You know, it's it's like it, because it's so different. Assets are not assets don't travel any over anything. They don't get uh, they don't get locked on one side and minted on another. Instead, they're actually just bound to each other. You're, you're like you're interlocking two chains together at the asset level. Um, so how you think about it is actually a little bit different and. How it's actually going to be used? Well, we're, we see some of the benefits already, and, and there's probably going to be more use cases that come out in the future. So it's not that traditional, you know. Just say you're moving Bitcoin to the Ethereum chain, you know, it 
burns it on one side and then mints it on the other then when you go back it does the vice versa pretty much that's pretty much how it works except it would uh, on most bridges it doesn't burn it on one side it actually it just locks it up it locks, locks it up, it up. In this, yeah yeah locks it up in one giant central vault for the most part and then it releases it when the, the asset comes back gotcha. um but yeah that's that's not being done in this case it's a, yep. it's a symbolic linkage yeah that's kind of cool it's tough to just really get down into it without getting into some of those crazy uh crazy verbiage i did throw up that um the diagram that cipher i think threw out on the screen here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah, I can see it. It's small on my screen, but yeah, I know the it's one. It's small. I'm about. sorry. There we go. Let's see if we can make it a little yeah, bigger. See, I can, I can, well, it's part of that's my screen. My screen is small. Okay. <laughs> so we talked quite a bit about what RGB plus plus is and the differences between the original RGB and uh, what CK is doing with it. Um, so how about the advantages overall? I mean, can we get into EVM stuff here at all? Or is um, it all virtual machine? Well, we don't want to use EVM as the thing. It's like Correct. EVM so we're getting away the, from Ethereum virtual machine. Exactly. I mean, like this is this has been a, a, a thing for a very long time, which is we know that EV, EVM is still the king and it, and it doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon, but it's hitting the, its boundaries rather quickly, um, both in functionality, but also just in scalability. It, it doesn't add up to what... Uh, the UTXO model it will, is capable of. Um, it, I mean, it, EVM has been around for quite some time now. There's a lot of projects who have focused on the the fact that it's still a um, single thread. Uh, it's a single thread operation, which means that effectively it's like having a computer with only one core on it. Um, whereas uh, UTXO is multi-core. It enables parallel transaction processing, which mm -hmm. is a huge thing when we're talking about trying to build a global system for computation. Uh, you can't have one or the other. You need both. You, you have to have very fast, efficient contracts, and you have to have parallel processing. Processing. There's not really any other way around it. Um, so we don't really want EVM. Um, and there's just a lot of things in general that um, RGB++ brings to Bitcoin. New features like account abstraction and open transactions. Both of those are things that you won't find on EVM. Um, you'll find very few chains actually that have that at all. They're very new technologies that have been coming out. And, you know, of course, all the things I already mentioned, faster uh, block times, lower transaction fees, um, non-interactive transactions that are capable with RGB++, meaning that only one side has to be on to send it. The other side doesn't have to, con to be on online as well to receive it. Um, certain things like transaction folding, which is new to RGB, it, it's the, the, it means that um, you can do um, multiple transactions on. What, we got a bell going here. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was a. Uh, I can mute that. System sounds muted. There we go. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, transaction pooling, which means you can you can do a, a series of transactions on CKB before making any commitment on BTC, which just means faster processing of transactions. Um, no, like I mentioned before, no need to self custody any off chain data. Um, and then of course access to future innovations like Kalani, which is the cross chain intent driven solver infrastructure that we hope to see uh, in the next next couple of years. Um, that's a, that's going to be a very big innovation. And that's not just coming to CKB anymore. That's coming to, to Bitcoin and CKB. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome, man. It seemed like the whole last cycle was if you couldn't onboard into EVM on Ethereum and collect EVM money or Ethereum, you know, market cap or TVL, you really didn't stand a chance in the space. And then that whole area just rolled over and died. It was kind of crazy how that happened in the bear run. It's just all yeah. just disappeared. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, a big part, part, part of that it was it was just money being poured into to endless clones yep. of uh, pancake swap, swap. I mean, how many of them do you really need? Um, it's it didn't Apparently really do it's not much as money as we had. Yeah, there's there's a huge <laughs> amount of them. They didn't really do anything but split up liquidity. It's, a lot of them were rug pulls. Um, it's it wasn't a good situation. And then once the bear market hit, of course, a lot of them just disappeared. Yeah, they inflated their supply into nothing valuable anymore. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest questions I had that, that I actually had, you know, issues sourcing even remotely an answer for is, is what does this actually do for uh, the asset evaluation of CKB? What's the impact on TVL, the, the demand? Uh, I saw here that, that, you know, somebody tracking wallets has got, uh, we are up about 600,000 new addresses here in the last three months on CKB. Uh, so there's certainly some interest on the token end of this, but uh, what can you tell me about like how this locks up TVL for actual Nervos? 
Right. Well, I mean, this is this is a huge thing because Bitcoin is a huge thing and we're opening doors for them and for ourselves. Um, so it, it really just it ends up being better dApps, more on chain usage and activity. And this happens in a couple different ways. Like, for example, if there are DEXs or pools um, that are built, those are going to be built on the CKB side. Uh, and we'll use isomorphic binding to have assets from Bitcoin be able to be able to use this DEX. But the actual on-chain activity is going to be on Nervos because we have CKB VM. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to lock up directly thing, there, a lot of CKB for smart contracts, for data storage, for every one of those assets, uh, for transaction fees. It, could, it leads to more usage naturally. So um, does a TVL on, on, on an asset on RGB++ lead to a locked back TVL on CKB as well? This this is kind of a funny question, because like I said before, this is not a traditional bridge. Correct. So it, it technically exists on both chains at the same time. I would say that it, it's it's it is on both. Uh, well, I would say that because it's if you're putting it into a DEX, that's basically the end point. I, I would say, yes, it is locking the TVL in there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it can be it can be accessed by the um, the. RGB side might be able to have some influence over control over certain aspects. So it, it's not like it's not the clearest line, but I would say that, yes, that is effectively moving TVL to uh, Nervos in that respect. Nice. So what we have else there we had. Let's take a peek. A uh, good question over here in chat. So great info. So CKB with RGB plus plus sounds like an alternative to lightning network. It's not really a, an alternative, though. It works with it. I mean, RGB on the Bitcoin side and RGB++ are both actually um, supposed to be work in tandem with Lightning Network and, and, and effectively enhance it. Um, so I can tell you that with on the RGB++ side, um, they are building certain things, um, a payment channel network, and then possibly in the fu future integration with Perun payment channels as well, um, that they hope will actually connect directly to Lightning Network. Um, so it, it is absolutely not supposed to replace it. it. It's actually just building more bridges in a sense. It, it's not the word I want to use, but it's the word I'm going to use. Um, it's building more bridges to connect all these different technologies together um, and actually reduce the friction to use them. There we go. Yeah, I saw integration with Lightning Map, uh, Network was actually on the roadmap for them. Um, actually moving into next quarter. Uh, but as far as some other things here, uh, let's just take a peek. So Bitcoin has, I mean, a ton of users. So like, it's it's weird. We talked real briefly about, you know, capturing the EVM market, the Ethereum virtual machine or on-chain uh, Ethereum TVL last cycle. It seems to be the Bitcoin narrative of this cycle. So, you know, you go from, I don't even remember what Ethereum topped out of sub, you know, $1 trillion somewhere last market cycle and Bitcoin's at, you know, 1.3, 1.4, 1.7. I'm not even sure where it's at right now but a lot more money on chain to play with. Uh, but what else can we expect out of, uh, out of any of this stuff? Uh, anything else you want to share with us? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, Bitcoin is absolutely huge, of course. And we're talking about trillions of dollars in market cap and, and uh, it's, it's only going to grow in the future, right? So this, yeah. every time you enable users to do something with this, like we said, CKB is going to benefit both directly and indirectly, directly through the usage of the CK byte, which is required for everything that they want to do. Any yep. kind of data storage is required at one to one. Every time you lock a RGB UTXO, you're creating a, a cell on the um, CKB side to represent it and create that linkage. That's all taking up CK bytes. So mm -hmm. you're talking about a huge amount of linkage as, as activity starts to grow. Um, and I believe that there's there's an estimated 46 million wallets on Bitcoin right now that have at least a dollar in them. Um, and then total users is estimated at 50, anywhere from 50 to 100 million users. Um, so there's a tremendous user base over there. Um, yep. if, if CKB is able to capitalize this, on this and become the number one layer two uh, that users are, are familiar with using, a lot of that's going to be unlocked for them, right? This is going to create a huge flow of, of TVL and usage on, on CKB. And that's really why one of the reasons, you know, ordinals and uh, I can't, can't remember any of the other ones off the top of my head. Um, there was a few of them, but ordinals in general, right? So we're looking at just active addresses here on Bitcoin. And just today, you know, 831,000 addresses, you know, interacted on chain today. 
So that's the kind of thing that, you know, this technology opens uh, to bring in value to your own ecosystem, uh, which is actually quite, quite, quite impressive uh, at the end of the day. Um, I was trying to do a little more research on Cypher. Was he originally part of the Nervos team or was he someone that, um, tell me a little about him. Yeah, Cypher is one of the, the five founders, actually. Okay, so he so, is a founder of Nervos. I was afraid yes. that was an, an AI mistake, so I didn't actually put that in the description. I backed it up because I wasn't positive on that. Yeah, yeah, he's he's one of the founders. Um, he used to be part of uh, Cryptape, which is with most of the core developers. And a couple of years ago, he split off into do uh, Nervina. And um, they worked on a bunch of projects. They've worked on, uh, for example, the Coda NFT standard, which is an innovative standard, which uses almost no on-chain data, enables people to create NFTs for a fraction of a penny and move them around for a fraction of a penny, even during congested periods, you know, which is polar Huge. opposite of Ethereum. Yeah, yeah. which is potentially I don't, I don't know how Ethereum still a thing, man. <laughs> I, it's, quite frankly, I, I don't really fully know either. It, it's kind of confusing, but um, when you look at what's going to drive mass adoption, you can't have hundred dollar fees on an NFT. That's you, you need to have very minuscule fee, fees and, and Coda is part of that. Coda yeah. is a big part of that solution. Um, so Cypher's team also put together Joy ID wallet, yep, which, which is, is a beautiful is hands, did system. Yeah. Yep. It is the easiest to use wallet out there right now. It has all kinds of uh, chains are being supported for it currently, including Ethereum and Bitcoin. Um, and it's, I think it very recently hit 100,000 daily active users. So it's getting phenomenal traction. Yep. And, um, and all of these users, they are, anytime they upgrade their wallet to um, be able to use certain capabilities, like being able to, uh, what is it? The um, recovery, account recovery, there, it's being done on Nervos in the back end. So it's, oh, again, it? It's, it is. It is locking up CK bytes every time somebody does that. Um, so all of this is making huge pushes. And, and let's not forget that last year, last November, we had the halving event for Nervos too, the first halving event. Um, so the supply was cut in half at that time. Yep. So it's not, it's not really that big of a surprise that here a few months later, uh, we saw a major increase in the, the market capitalization uh, which has resulted both from the excitement around RGB, BTC, KB, and of course, a, a constrained supply and more usage on chain. All of these things are very beneficial to investors. Yeah, it's it's wild. Um, you know, the CKB news is like the whole takeoff of the, the asset price caught a lot of the, the US traders off guard because they don't follow anything that's going on in, in any other language. Uh, before we hop into that here, this is Joy ID. It's just joy.id. Um, this is an interesting wallet. It doesn't use uh, traditional in um, what's the word I'm looking for? Your key phrases. It, it's got some other yeah. systems that work very well. And if you're you know really risk adverse to storing, remembering, or trying to keep track of a a, a key phrase, uh, check this out. The only thing I'll tell you I didn't like immediately about it is it only up supports the most updated versions of Windows. So you got to be in Windows 11 to use it on your PC. Works fine on Android and iPhone and all that good stuff. Uh, but I don't like Windows 11, so I can't even use it on my PC. I think there might be a way that you can you can get some of that functionality in Windows 10, but it's it's not easy. But yeah, I, I know what you're saying. You've got to have <laughs> there's there's reasons for this though. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's reasons. Specifically, there's specifically this the technology that this is built on is called WebAuthN, and this is something that's been a collaboration between hardware manufacturers, operating system manufacturers, and web browser. Um, um, developers for it called? like a decade. It's called WebAuthn. W e b a u t h n. Um, yeah, there you go. So like this technology, what this means is is like we have like uh, on, you know, on the internet in total an enormous amount of password theft. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, like thousand number, percent. This is one of the main problems with the internet right now is that that passwords are always being stolen because it's very hard for humans to keep track of them. So WebAuthN is a big a big upgrade to this, which is the user is no longer responsible for their password. Mm -hmm. um, the password is actually stored in a piece of hardware, which is called a secure enclave on your device. That's in all modern computers. It's in all modern smartphones. Um, it's a device where the, the private keys, which are effectively replacing your passwords, are on this little chip that is pretty much near impossible to break into without destroying the chip itself. So all your passwords, your your private keys are stored on this chip, and then they're unlocked through um, basically the biometrics of the device, which is 
face ID, touch ID, or whatever your pin code is. Um, so that's those those types of technologies are replacing it because they can't be stolen. Um, they're, mm -hmm. They never leave the device. Um, and so this is taking it. So this is what Joy ID is doing is taking advantage of this technology, which has been slow to roll out, but is slowly going to more and more replace all passwords on the Internet. Yeah, um, I could use it, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every so, time I, I create mean, a password listen, online and says, "Oh, look, this password has been stolen somewhere." Try another oh, one. Oh yeah, I've, that just that's like a, 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 a I get those like once a month, right? It's the, ridiculous. The, something that's it's because like I I use the same I used a lot of the same passwords and same email addresses a long time ago for more than a decade, right? It's it's yep, all out yep. there. Um, I mean, there was a there was a period of time where I was actually I was on the dark web investigating myself. I wanted to see yeah, could I've I could I find well. my own information. <laughs> yeah, I went out there. I actually paid for it. I paid for my own information, found out they had everything about me out there, my addresses, yeah. my old phone numbers, um, my my secret little phrases, uh, the personal question things. They had everything. Passwords, fully decrypted. Everything is out yeah. there. It's all and it's all for there, sale. It's all for sale. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you pay these folks big money or you become the product, right? So, you know, places like Facebook and and Instagram and TikTok and I mean even the X to an extent I mean it's all free free right so they sell all your information to somebody and they sell it to somebody who's not good with it and they lose it and it's gone and it's out there uh, but just going over this uh, web off end it looks like it's backed by Google Microsoft and um, Ubico which is uh, a very old authentication company in the cryptographic area if I remember correctly you, you get the little Ubico key and you plug it into your, your PC to boot it up that kind of thing Am I thinking yeah, that's the exactly. right company? Yeah. Okay. Yep, that's the one. Yep. So pretty neat. I like it. Uh, Joy ID though, man, it's it looks nice. It looks like something that I wish would catch on more. I don't know how we can help them with their advertising, but Joy dot ID is their website. Um, going back to Cipher's presentations, I've never seen a Twitter space hit 140 thousand people concurrently, and he did that in like the first RGB plus plus one. It was absolutely insane to me. Couldn't yeah, understand I, like what I, was going on, but yeah, yeah. When, when they start speaking Chinese, I, I'm lost too. But uh, yeah, they've had a huge response over in the East from this. Um, so I mean, they're they're ready to capitalize this. They've been um, Cell Studios was formed, um, you know, specifically to work on BTCKB related technology. Uh, the CKB Eco Fund was formed, and that's that's basically a rebrand of the Innovation Fund. Mm -hmm. um, they've been making big pushes on that as well. Um, let's see, Cell Studios also recently, they had a VC raise, which was completed yep. to build something called the, I think they're calling it the UTXO stack, which is a, it's a technology stack a developer toolkits and stuff to help developers build easily on RGB plus um, plus, which is going to really help out these, these types of technology stacks have been extremely popular over in the e Ethereum ecosystem, like with, with, um, uh, op stack, which is for the optimism side of things. Mm -hmm. um, we expect that there's going to be a lot of demand for something like that too. So anyway, the development was expanded. The development team was expanded. There's been a huge amount of uh, market attention and they're ready to capitalize on all of it. So how about um, as far as Nervos' support with them? Are they kind of, I know the product's out, it's stable. I mean, they're probably steadily upgrading the CKB stack itself. Um, but how much of like the, the Nervos team is actually focused on this stuff? Um, a very big chunk of it, I would say. Like, I know that resources were actually shifted from, we had a bunch of people who I, I believe were core developers on um, on the CKB side um, with the core team, and they actually moved from Cryptape to Nervina um, mm -hmm. to, to work with, on Cell Studio. So, you know, I don't really have an accurate number on this, but I'm going to guess that at least 60% or more of all of the developers were working on Nervos are now currently working on RGB++ and the BTCKB initiatives. So it's a it's a big push. I like to hear it's that. It's a very big deal. It is a very big deal. I mean, we've seen that there's there's clearly a lot of demand for it. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's clearly that the VCs are lined up to support it. So yeah, they're, they're really throwing a lot at this right now. Yeah, I was looking for the VC funding raise. I thought I saw somewhere 30 million, but it may have not been that correct number. Um, yeah, I don't see it here. Yeah, yeah I don't have the, I don't know what the number it was. I think that was probably on the Cell Studio Twitter page, if I had to guess. What's up, Bitcoin AGU 3000 BTC? It's been a while, man. Now, hopefully you're in Discord by now. Every time I see you, like, nah, man, I'm not in Discord. Um, anyway, 
So any, anything else on the Nervos side of things that maybe not RGB++ related that you like to talk about? I don't know if there's something you guys are sharing on yeah. Thursday. Yeah, there's a couple of things. You know, well, yeah, we'll be sharing more on Thursday for sure. But I mean, definitely there's there's a bunch of stuff going on. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the ecosystem as well. Um, just with little projects that are starting to come up and, and really want to take advantage of the Bitcoin things. Um, I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest things that we're seeing is that for projects that we're planning to launch on just CKB are now planning to launch on CKB and Bitcoin. And this is, this okay. is great. I like that. This is, this is, this is great. Like, uh, because like for the longest time, um, going back years, I've always made a push with every company that I talked to. Um, and I encourage them to go multi-chain. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I encourage them to do Why not so capture more, capture more, like whatever they can do to be successful. Don't, they don't necessarily need to put all of their eggs in the CKB basket, which happens to be still very small in comparative to something like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Go multi-chain, right? Be successful. As, as long as they are successful and, and we are a part of that, CKB is a part of that, that's beneficial for everybody. Yeah, 1000%. Uh, I think we've cracked the top 100 at this point. Uh, we were ranked oh, yeah, 91. Yeah. We were 80, 87 at one point. I don't know if it got any higher than that, but. Oh, I saw it higher than that. I saw Did it you? in the 60s at least, possibly oh, even higher. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Uh, a little bit below the market cap of $1 billion now, 980, but the Bitcoin correction summer law could be upon us at this point. Um, but anything else you're thinking about? Um, let's see. No, not too much at this point. I see we're, we're at the hour here. Um, yep. Yeah, I mean, definitely anybody who wants to learn more about what's going on in the ecosystem and recommend hashing it out this Thursday, yep. uh, we'll be covering a whole lot more stuff on that. Nice. Well, we're going to wrap it up here, guys. We don't want to overload you with too much. I do appreciate Mr. Jordan's time here uh, every single time he hops on the channel. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Anything you can catch Jordan one more time here. Let me just flip the screen around. Let me find us here. There we go. And Jordan here. Oh, you know what? Before we do wrap it... I, I, I wanted to ask you about this game. Plug this game, Blitz, Blitz TCG. Oh yeah, yeah, Blitz TCG. I I really like this game, and, and this guy Mick talk is about the founder. it all the I, time. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> what, Blitz, this is this is the thing. Like Blitz is a card game. It's a, it's a card game like Magic, the, Magic the Gathering, Hearthstone, Pokemon yep, yep. trading game. One of those. Um, but he really has paid a lot of attention to how to do the the blockchain aspect of this game properly. And that's mm -hmm. one of the most intriguing things about it, because, um, you know, a, a couple of years back, like I got the opportunity to talk to a lot of different game companies because that was the, the focus of Godwoken. Yep. And most of these game companies, they're great at building games. They have no idea what they're doing with blockchain. So when they try to integrate the two, it's it's just a complete disaster for the most part. Right. The token that they put out there has no value. It just inflates forever. There's no reason to, to even hold it. Um, this is not the case with Blitz TCG. Every mm -hmm. card that you have not only has value in the game and collectible value, but it has a scarcity thing that is actually increasing over time. He's got this whole tokenomic system, which I can't, I can't really even explain it too well. With the, he really should be the one to explain it, but mm -hmm. it's it's rather intriguing. He, gotcha. he has it where there should be, there should be like floor values on all the cards, and and it should move with an ebb and flow every time. There's a bunch of cards, and people start burning the cards because they want more tokens. It'll rate. It'll like. It'll it'll raise the value of the cards that are being burned and, and deflate the token a little bit, and then it'll flow back the other way because people now they need more cards again. So it's yep. a really interesting type of a system. And the guy who put this together, Mick, is is super nerd extraordinaire when it comes to this stuff. Like you, if you see the pictures of this, his walls, they're like <laughs> lined with trading cards and everything. There you go. Right? This this guy was like born to build this game. He understands blockchain. He understands um the all these card games he understands he understands everything to build the this really the perfect mix of this and it shows he's put a tremendous amount of effort into it um and so yeah i'm just i'm really looking forward to the game more gotcha. than pretty much any other game that i've seen even though it's it is a tiny indie title but i yep. mean that said i think that says something like there's something very special about it it's it's not out yet, right? There's no. It it is not out yet. They're gotcha. looking forward to the the token sale. Uh, I think the end of this month they're gonna pro well not the token sale the card sale. They're gonna do the initial card sales at the end of this month. I think they're starting on the Ergo chain. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to be on that too. They're coming to Nervos, but we're a little bit behind. We're a couple months behind on that. We just we weren't ready for it. So hopefully we'll we will get in 
um, closer to the actual game launch, which isn't it isn't happening at the end of this month, right? The end of this month is just the card sale. Later mm-hmm. on, they're going to actually release the full game. Gotcha. That's interesting. I, I did want to ask you about that before we got out of here. But again, guys, you can find at Jordan underscore Mac over on the X platform or Twitter, whatever you want to call it these days. And uh, I think that's really going to wrap us up. I appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out like always. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.